All right, so I'm, I'm gonna give today a 20 or 25 minute presentation on the software package that we've been developing in Ben Neal's group at the Broad Institute. Uh, this is called Hale, uh, and we're on our second version now. And I'm gonna tell you first a bit what Hale is, and primarily it's a library for analyzing genetic data in a scalable way, although it's also good for other kinds of data as well, as I'll, I'll hope to show you. So what is Hale actually good for? Uh, the project is about three years old, and originally it was designed to analyze enormous VCF files that were coming out of the Broad genomics platform. And the problem was that genetic data was exploding, and these VCFs were growing to be terabytes in size, and there was really no way to analyze these files with single-threaded or single-core tools. So from the beginning, Hale was designed to scale. And by scale, I mean that Hale can take advantage of many computers to run computations much more quickly. And scalability really, really gets you two things. First, it means that analyzing big data is actually possible. But just as importantly, analyzing small data can be interactive. And I think there's a misconception floating around that scalable tools are only good when you have tremendously large data. But that's not true. If your data is large enough that, that doing anything takes more than a few seconds or, or a few minutes, then you could benefit from scalable tools and take everything back to an, an interactive regime. Um, and finally, the most recent version of Hale, 0.2, has entirely generic interfaces, which means that it's actually good for analyzing any sort of matrix-shaped biological data. Um, and we've had people who have, have started using Hale for RNA-seq analysis as well. Um, and now I'm going to go into a little bit about what you need to, to know about Hale in order to become a, a pro and able to use the full power of the library. Now, the first and most important thing is understanding the two primary interfaces of the two uh, data representations in Hale, the matrix table and table. Uh, second is knowing how to use expressions in Hale to annotate and filter and aggregate. Um, you need to know about types of expressions. Types are an important concept in Hale. You need to know how to use the functions inside of the, the, Hale, the Hale module, and you need to know how to use Python objects to interact with Hale as well. Uh, and finally, if you're doing genetics, you need to be familiar with the genetics functionality. Um, and there are a number of, of methods that enable you to deal very naturally with TRIO data, compute Mendelian errors, de novos, or to orient your genetic matrix by TRIO. This is very powerful. Um, there are a number of statistical methods that can let you do GWAS or regression based on some other variable as well. Um, and, and, and these would extend to things like linear algebra and principal component analysis. There's, there's quite a, a large toolbox of things that, are, that, are, that live inside Hale. Um, there are also a number of, of methods that are designed to do QC on especially sequencing data, things that can deal very naturally with the kind of VCF files that are, that are produced by tools like GATK. Um, and finally, there are some methods that deal with concepts like relatedness. Uh, Hale has a, a number of methods. This, and one, one of the ones I think we're most proud of is an implementation of the PC relate package uh, in, a, in a very fast and scalable way. And recently this was used to do, to run, to run PC relate on 150,000 samples uh, as part of the nomad analysis. So how do we represent genetic data inside Hale? This is a picture of the abstract representation of a VCF, and a VCF is a matrix. And this matrix has two axes. It has a sample axis. Those are the columns of the matrix. And it has a variant axis, which are the rows of the matrix. And inside the entries of this matrix are the individual genotypes. So for a VCF, the genotypes are the format field. This is the thing like GT, AD, DP, GQ, and PL. Now, on the variant axis, you have the fields like the locus and the alleles, the RSID, and the info field. Uh, but a VCF is lacking something, actually. It's lacking the ability to specify arbitrary data that, that is associated with the samples. And so this is something that we needed to have inside Hale. And so when, we, when we're trying to map this, this data representation onto the Hale 0.2 interface, what we use is the matrix table. The matrix table is a generic structured matrix. And I, I, it has this table word on the end of it because a matrix connotes something that just has numeric entries. But a matrix table has a structured entry. So inside of the, each, each of the entries of this matrix could be a number of, of fields of different names and types and lengths. So in the VCF case, the entry has five fields, GT, AD, GQ, uh, DP, and PL. 
Uh, and Hale also has a table representation, which is a one-dimensional thing, like a SQL table or an R or Pandas data frame. So let's, let's get to know matrix table a little bit with code. First, I need to import the Hale package, and I'm going to read a matrix table from disk. Um, I'm using the MT identifier for this to indicate matrix table. Um, and if you start up Hale, you'll see a message like this using 0.2. Um, note that even though you see this warning, 0.2 is quite stable. Uh, the file format is not changing anytime soon, and the interfaces aren't changing too often. So what can you do with a matrix table? Um, it has a number of fields. It has global fields, row fields, column fields, and entry fields. And we can manipulate all of these things with Hale. Um, one, way, one way to actually visualize these different fields is with the describe method. And so describe is going to print out information about every aspect of the matrix table. We can see that this matrix table has no global fields. It only has one column field that came from a VCF, which, which only has a sample ID. Um, it has a quite a large number of row fields. Uh, these are things like the locus and alleles, the RSID, and, and every value in the info field. And it has entry fields, the ones coming from GTK VCS. It also has keys, which you don't need to worry about quite yet. I'll get into that in a few minutes. So how do you use Hale to compute new fields? So the methods that do this are called annotate and select. And on matrix table, you have a few of these. You have annotate rows, annotate calls, annotate entries. And these are used to compute new fields and to add them into the structure of the matrix. So here I'm computing two new fields. I'm computing call rate and the number of heterozygotes, per, each per variant. And so what I'm doing here is I'm aggregating over samples to, to compute the number of defined GT fields and counting the number of, of times per variant where the GT is heterozygous. And so what I can do next is I can show this data, which will print out the first few values of, of some field or expression. And it's printing out the keys as well because those are used to tag which value it's referring to. So I can also use annotate calls, which is going to add column fields, or in the genetics case, sample fields. So I can compute the mean sample depth very easily this way. And again, I can show this value, which is going to print out the mean depth and the sample ID, which is the key, the column key of the matrix. So now let's learn a little bit about what a, a Hale table is. And this is probably going to be much more familiar for people who have used SQL or pandas or R. So we have a method import table, which can import a text file from disk. And I'm, I'm passing this impute equals true argument to, to, to indicate that we should Im try to impute the types of the various fields. And so this, this readout is telling us that the sample field was imputed as a string. The population and superpopulations were also strings. Is female and purple hair were Boolean values, true or false. Uh, and the caffeine consumption value is a floating point number. So one of the very natural things to do with a table is to try to show it, which will print out the first few values of each field. This is the rough structure of this table, which I named HT. Um, I'll, get it, I'll, I'll show one example of how to aggregate a table. Um, this is going to be a combination of two method calls, first group by and second aggregate. So in this case, I'm taking my table, I'm grouping it by population, I'm aggregating each value that, that per population into a single value. And so what I'm doing here is I'm computing the mean caffeine consumption per population and the fraction of people with purple hair also per population. And I can pass the negative one argument to show every value of this table instead of just, uh, just the first 10. So here, here's what the, uh, the results are for this, this aggregation. My population is the key of this resulting table, and I have my mean caffeine consumption and my fraction of purple hair. So basically nothing I've showed you so far has been at all related to genetics. Wait, I think I'm still muted. What's the reason for that? Oh, we're using it, okay, never mind. Um, okay, uh, right, 
And so, so one of those important features is using tables and matrix tables together. Because we can use a table to add fields to a matrix table along rows or columns or entries. And so you can think of the key of a table or a matrix table as a way to treat these objects as dictionaries, meaning that you can look up values associated with the key or look up values associated with some, some key in another table. This is one of the most powerful features and it's how you do uh, one, one form of joins inside of Hale. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to take my Hale table, HT, and I'm going to add its fields to my matrix table joining along the sample ID of the matrix. And so this is going to add a bunch of new fields into the column schema of my matrix table. And so now, for example, I have this sample data field, which contains all of the fields that HT had, for example, is female. And so this field now exists inside of the matrix table. Uh, and one concept that we try to, to make very natural inside Hale is having a, an entire workspace of tables and matrix tables that you can use all together. Um, and, and one of the things that Hale is, is quite unique in being able to do is that it can, it can store and process together huge numbers of fields associated with variants and samples and entries. Uh, many other, other packages like Pandas and, and R might not be as good at scaling to hundreds or thousands of columns in a table. Or, or fields in, in a matrix, but Hale does it very naturally. So the last major section I'm gonna show you is the set of packaged methods that Hale includes. And, and these do things like data import and export, importing BCFs, exporting BCFs, importing from other formats, exporting to gen or bgen files. Uh, there's a set of statistical genetics functions, which are used to do GWASs or, or similar computations. These would also include things like burden, like gene burden tests, which you can write in terms of a group by and a linear regression. Finally, there are some methods for, uh, for next gen sequencing QC, which are, are things, methods that compute most of the statistics you would want to know in order to do an effective quality control on a data set. There are the trio, the trio data analysis methods and some linear algebra like principal component analysis. So the first example I'll show you is sample QC. And sample QC is one, one method, it's, its twin is variant QC, and these basically compute a laundry list of useful statistics for doing sequencing data quality control. So here, here's the type of the sample QC field which came out. It's a structure with a bunch of fields in it, uh, and all of these things are probably useful in some form for, for trying to understand and filter samples in a, in a next-gen sequencing data set. Variant QC is very similar, and it produces also a number of fields, uh, like the number of hats and the number of homozyg homozygotes, the Hardy-Weinberg p-value, uh, and, I, and uh, uh, right, actually meant to do variant QC here. And I can do, for example, the p of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, and all these values are very accessible. Um, these methods are sort of prepackaged things that you could actually implement in terms of the annotate and select things that I showed you before, but are, are packaged up in a nice way to try to make things very efficient for people analyzing genetic data. So now I'm going to show you using linear regression to do a GWAS, um, and it, it might be a few more words than running clink dash dash a soak, but it is very, very flexible. So for example, here, I'm doing a regression on the caffeine consumption phenotype. This is my Y variable, my dependent variable. Uh, you can actually specify multiple dependent variables at one time. My independent variable, X, uh, is going to be the number of alternate alleles in the genotype. And I can include covariates as well. In this case, I'm using uh, is female. And so this is going to uh, produce as well a, a a new set of annotations in th that live in the, the row schema of the matrix. And here's what it gives you. It gives you the number of complete samples. It gives you some metadata about the regression process. And it gives you betas, standard errors, t-statistics, and p-values. So these are sort of what you're, what you're looking for in doing a GWAS. But because linear regression is so flexible, it means you can, you can do this for other types of data as well. So if you have a hypothesis that the missingness pattern of your genotypes might be correlated with your population, uh, perhaps you think that 
since so much of the data is European, Europeans are, are mapped better, and so Europeans will have less missingness, you could test this with hail. You can actually use a, a dependent variable as the missingness. Here I'm converting the non-Europeanness of a sample to an integer, and that's my dependent variable. My independent variable is going to be whether the genotype is missing or not. Now this is all super easy to, to, to specify and to run a regression on. Um, so just a, a short aside is going to be uh, a little demonstration of Python plotting interop. Now I am a big fan of Jupyter notebooks, and I think that they are a great way to organize results and computations in the same place. Um, but they also can harness the power of a web browser in order to produce interactive plots. So I would highly recommend the package Bokeh, which, which enables you to plot HTML plots that can be dragged around and, and zoomed in on. These things are all, are all quite nice. And I think there are, there are better alternatives to Matplotlib in Jupyter Notebook environments. Uh, in this case, I'm taking all of the GQ and, and I'm, I'm taking the GQ mean and DP mean values per sample and I'm plotting them against each other. Now, I don't think it surprises anybody that GQ and, D, and DP are very correlated, uh, given that the GQ is basically predicted by the sample depth. Um, so we, we do expect to see something that's roughly linear, but I think that the deviations could be interesting and could be useful for doing quality control. So I'm going to end with a short HAIL 0.2 survival guide. And this is going to involve a few tips for people who have used HAIL 0.1. Uh, first, a warning that the file format has changed. You'll need to re-import. A few of the types have changed, which, and, and many of the interfaces have changed, which means you, you would have to rewrite your pipelines from HAIL 0.1. And just a final warning that the current 0.2 version is a beta version, and there are some interface changes that are happening. Although these are few, and I think we're going to start making public posts every time they happen. Um, the resources that we've produced are much more useful than a 20 or 25 minute talk. Uh, we have a, a quite large set of documentation that is, is much more useful than, than, than a short video. Uh, in particular, I would recommend starting with the HAIL overview and the tutorials. We recently added uh, eight more tutorials to the HAIL GWAS overview tutorial. So I think there are nine or 10 tutorials now. It's, it's a quite good state of affairs. Um, and I would recommend visiting the discussion forum in order to uh, to post problems you might have, or, or if you're interested in applications of HAIL. Uh, if, if you're interested in using HAIL for RNA-seq, we'd love to hear about that. Um, you can also come stop by the Gitter channel, although I would actually really recommend the discussion forum because the, the Gitter channel is getting somewhat crowded. Um, and finally, I want to express that the, the secret recipe in HAIL, the secret ingredient in HAIL is everybody who's giving good feedback about the kinds of biological data analysis that they're doing. Um, and that in order to build the right kinds of tools and the right kinds of interfaces and abstractions, we need to know what scientists are actually doing. So if you're, if you're doing big or little biological data analysis, uh, we would love to hear from you on the discussion forum. And finally, here is, here is the website. Uh, you can link to all of the other pieces, the documentation, the forum uh, from here. Um, and we'd love to, to hear more about what kinds of analysis you're doing, and I'm happy to take any questions.